Hello everybody. In this video we're going to go over plotting polygons in the coordinate plane. Um, usually there's a follow-up question with them, um, naming the shape or maybe even reflecting the shape like it was just covered in a previous video on how to reflect points. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. Obviously a prerequisite is knowing how to plot individual points and we're just simply playing connect the dots. So I'm going to start by plotting point A. I'm going to put my pen on the origin and I'm going to negative 3, which means I'm going over 3 units to the left, and now up 5. The y value is 5, positive 5. I like to label it right away so I don't forget what it is. If you plot all 4 and then you're trying to figure out which point's what, you're basically doing double the amount of work. Um, now point B is 2, 5, so back to the origin. I'm going to go 2 to the right now and also 5 up. So I can kind of cheat and just look at that same plane that A was on. C is at negative 1, negative 1, which means 1 to the left, 1 down. And last but not least, negative 6 for D. So 6 to the left and 1 down. And now we're going to play connect the dots, like I said earlier. Do you want to connect these in order? So A to B to C to D, and then close it up. Okay. So we see we have a nice polygon formed here. It's a quadrilateral, more specific, uh, specifically. Um, and get even more specific here. Obviously, it's a quadrilateral, has four sides. But what else can we classify this as? Is it a square? Is it a rectangle? Um, is it a rhombus? Is it a trapezoid? Because um, there is a follow-up question saying, what shape is formed? So we know it's a quad, for starters. Usually the question might say, this is just simplified text here but you might say you know name the most specific shape um, being that we don't want to just say quadrilateral so taking it a step further what shape would this be here um, let's think back to some of our properties first of all we could rule out rectangles and squares why um, we don't see any right angles we would see a perfectly perpendicular a vertical and a horizontal line if you look at point D we'd see something like this um, jutting out of it, which we don't. So it's not a rectangle, it's not a square. So rectangle, eh, square, also. Eh. Um, some other possibilities we can consider, um, and ultimately what's going to be the answer here, I'm trying to be a little bit more dramatic, this is a parallelogram. Parallelogram. Sure, that looks good. Not going to win any spelling bees anytime soon. Um, so why is it a parallelogram? By definition, a parallelogram is anything that has two pairs of parallel sides. Um, and we, like we said earlier, we can't go any more specific with rectangles or squares. Um, and it's not a rhombus either, um, because obviously we see that we don't have four congruent sides. It's pretty obvious that AD is bigger than AB. Um, and it's also fairly obvious that we have two pairs of parallel sides. Look at AB compared to DC. Obviously, they're both perfectly horizontal, so they're going to be parallel to one another. And then look at AD and BC. Okay, um, Both of these lines are going up six units and to the right three units. Okay, um, if you, This is getting a little bit above our pay grade here, but... These two lines would have the same slope, if you really want to get that far into it. Or basically, for all intents and purposes, um, they look parallel, right? Um, we don't have to get into, like, the we're getting to, you know, region's geometry if we talk about proving why it's parallel. Um, but for our purposes now, um, we have two pairs of parallel sides. They're not all congruent, so it's not a rhombus. They're not right angles, so it's not a square. It's not a rectangle. Um, we have simply a parallelogram. It's also not a trapezoid if we wanted to put that on our quad list. Trapezoid would only have one pair. So trapezoids kind of stick out. Um, those would be easy to pick out if we did have a trapezoid. Okay. Um, so thank you guys for watching. This is all that would be covered in some type of polygon question. Like I said, maybe they could ask some type of reflection question. Like, hey, reflect over the x-axis and plot the new coordinates. Um, but naming the shape, probably the more... Um, important focus for us right now. Okay, so thanks for watching and hopefully you found this helpful.